As always, Joe Louis Arena in Detroit is jam-packed. It's sellout after sellout here. And tonight, a very big Norris Division game between the St. Louis Blues and the Detroit Red Wings. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Detroit. I'm Ken Wilson along with John Kelly. It's been a great rivalry over the years, the Blues and the Wings. And here's a situation where they play here tonight in Detroit, tomorrow night back at the arena in St. Louis. And, John, there's no question, these are important games. Well, right now the Blues have a 10-point lead over the Red Wings with a game in hand. And, Ken, I think if the Blues can win tonight's game and tomorrow's back at the arena in St. Louis, they'll have a 14-point lead. And that will just about do it as far as the Red Wings are concerned in the regular season. You know, as important as this game is tonight and tomorrow night's game is for the two teams, all eyes still remain on number 16, Brett Hall. The Blues star, 48 goals in 48 games. Well, naturally the NHL goal scoring leader and by a margin of 14 goals. He's getting all sorts of national attention. There are members from other sources here tonight. Sports Illustrated has sent a writer. There's writers here from Toronto. And Brett was entertaining all of the writers and the, the people in the media this morning. And he's very matter of fact. He says, if it happens this weekend, it happens. If not, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. The other night, in game number 48, he scored two goals. And he was helped out by Adam Oates, both in the second period. Both goals were really goal scorers goals. The first one on a, just a one-timer deflection in front. And the second one, he picks it up on a bad angle. And there wasn't much room between Hayward and the goalpost, but he found the range and scored two goals. Brett trying to join the 50-50 club, trying to become only the fifth player in NHL history to score 50 goals in 50 games. It's an elite group. It certainly is. Gretzky, Lemieux, Bossy, Maurice Richard, the first one to do it. But, Ken, what's really amazing about this year and the way Brett has scored is it's a defensive year. The, the goals are down this year in the National Hockey League by nearly one a game, but yet Brett has put together a great offensive year in a year that has been dominated, I think, by goaltenders and defense. No question. This Detroit team is a team that comes in having lost three consecutive games, but they're a good team offensively. They have two of the NHL's brightest stars. One fellow we've seen now for eight NHL seasons, their captain, Steve Eiserman. Well, the Red Wings and the Blues are similar in one respect. They both depend on one or two key players, Hall and Oates for the Blues, Eiserman and Fedorov are the two key men to stop on Detroit. With Eiserman and Fedorov, Ken, I think the Red Wings have as good as a one-two combination at center as any team in the National Hockey League. Sergei Fedorov the 21-year-old in his rookie season from the Soviet Union. Iserman and Fedorov, two great players for the Detroit Red Wings. This crowd is ready, and so are we here at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. It's the Blues and the Red Wings coming right up. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. In Detroit's Joe Louis Arena, Vince Riendo, and that's tonight for the Blues, has a record of 15-7-5, including a 4-1 mark against the Red Wings with a 2.40 average against the Red Wings this year. So Vince has played well against Detroit this season. At the other end is young Tim Shevelday, a 22-year-old native of Melville, Saskatchewan. He has played in 42 games this year, the second most in the league behind Ed Belfour's 46. And he started eight of the last nine. And he's been in nets for four of the games against the Blues and has a one and three record with a 5.00 average. The referee tonight is Ron Hogarth. And the line's been Ray Scampanello and Leon Stickle. Well, a big weekend. The Blues and Red Wings meet tonight here in Detroit and back in St. Louis. And Ken, you would think a sweep by the Blues would just about clinch at least second place for St. Louis. It would certainly uh, hurt the Detroit Red Wings. This division in the last few years, teams have been able to catch up in a hurry. But I don't think Brian Murray feels he has a hockey team as good as the Blues and certainly not as good as Chicago. Well, we're set to go here, and the Blues win the faceoff, and Glenn Featherstone on defense with Mario Marawa has the puck, gives it to Marawa. He loses it at center ice. Green gets it ahead to Brent Fedick, who shoots it in, and Riendo clears to the corner to Marawa. Oates is centering a line with Hall on right wing. Hall at center ice gets a pass from Brindamore. In over the line to Oates, a bad angle shot off the post. He beat Shevel Day and hit the post. The puck behind the Detroit net. Oates checked by Green. Now Brindamore trying to dig the puck out. Gets a stick on it, then he's yanked down by Green, who ends up with a puck. Up to Fedorov. He's stopped at center ice, and Oates has it for the Blues. He's checked right in front of the Blues bench. Fedorov tries to move in and can't, but here come the Red Wings. Kosher's alone in front, but they can't get the pass to him. Kosher was all alone in front. 
But Longo was unable to get it through to him. Blues come back. Oates over the line and a feed to Hall doesn't work. As the two teams attempt to change players. A minute and five have gone by. One minute, five seconds here in the opening period. Oates shoots the puck in from center ice and the two teams complete a line change. Rich Sutter digs the puck out, plays it back to the point to Paul Cavallini. He can't control. Then Eiserman with a break falls down and sweeps the puck to Harold Snets deep in his own end. To Dave Lowry on the left wing. Rip rink wide to Sutter. He'll shoot it in out of the corner and Basson beaten to the puck. And Rick Zombo touches it, and it's an icing call against the Blues as these two teams go end to end here for the first 90 seconds. Riendo has not seen a shot, but the Blues hit the post, John, just in the opening seconds. Some new line combinations tonight. Paul is with Oates and Brindamore, and Oates moved in on left wing, looked in front, and then shot. Not many goalies expect Oates to shoot, and he beat Chevelday to the glove side, but it hit the left goal post. Oates got a nice drop pass, and at a very bad angle, he simply beat Day. And had that gone in, that would have been what you would call a bad goal. Here's the faceoff near the St. Louis net. Burr wins the draw. Back to the left point to Eversina. Backhand shot off the chest of Riendo, and he snares the puck in his trapper and holds it to stop play as the Blues will change players here very quickly and that pass in Sutter and Lowry line goes off and Rick Mahar will come on centering a line. Bob Probert has not played all the time but is certainly a heavyweight in there for Detroit. Well he missed a dozen games in December with a broken wrist and no question Ken the Red Wings are a different team with or without Bob Probert. Isovard a shot from the face off and his backhander stopped. Probert behind the net taken out by Stevens. Burr trying to center unable to. Racine pinches in. Isobart has it in the corner for Detroit. He's checked. And the Blues, McLean, shoots it out to Cortinal on the left wing. Over the line. He winds up a shot and a pad save. Stevens looking for the rebound tied up. And Detroit comes back. Up the right wing. Trying to move in. Isobart. He leaves the puck for Probert. And it's stolen by Cortinal. Then Probert steals it right back. Dumps it in the corner. And Jeff Brown sweeps it around the boards to McLean. He tries to poke it out. It finally comes to center ice and a battle for the puck there. And the Red Wings have it. Here they come again. Sean Burr over the line with Pro Bird and Isobar. Burr leaves the puck in the corner. Red Wings trying to set up a centering pass. He shoots, scores. Sean Burr. Great centering pass. And Burr, who's been hurting, scores for the Detroit Red Wings. Just two minutes and 31 seconds into the opening period. And Riendo had very little time to react. No, it was a bad bounce, Ken, as the Red Wings put the puck in front and the Blues' Jeff Brown fanned on it, or it bounced over his stick, and it went right to Burr, who was wide open in front, and Riendo had no chance at all. But the pass came from the corner. Rick Zombo centered it, and Brown went to clear it, and it either went over his stick or he missed it, and Burr won't get a better chance than that. Sean Burr gets his 14th of the season from the faceoff. The Red Wings ice the puck, and as Marouane touches it, the whistle stops play. The Detroit Red Wings score early to lead the Blues one to nothing. Only his second goal in his last 21 games, and he was questionable for tonight's game with a back injury. In the Detroit end, Iserman wins the draw from Oates, the former Red Wing. Gallant clears to center ice. After the puck is Eiserman, but Featherstone gets to it first. He loses it. Then Gallant can't move in front. And Merwa sends a pass out to Oates. Three on two. Oates shoots it in out of the corner. Holt cuts in front. Can't get to the puck. And it's touched by the Red Wings. And that is an icing call against the Blues, who shot it in from their side of the checkered center red line. And this faceoff will come all the way back near Riendo as the Blues teammates of Brett Hall John certainly have to be thinking of Brett I don't care how much you stress team they know just as well as anyone else he needs a couple of goals well Brett Hall might say it's not a big deal to score 50 goals in 50 games but I know his teammates are very excited about the possibility and Brian Sutter I don't think without question has moved the lines around to try and get Hall the 50 goals he has Oates on his line tonight and that's not normally the case here are the Blues Failing to get out, and then Kosher fans on a good shine. Kosher to Fedorov, and Fedorov's shot goes over the net. And the Wings are really hemming the Blues in. Now Mario Merwa gets the puck for the Blues. He'll just flip it through center ice back into the Detroit zone. 
Chris Longo, a Detroit native who played at Michigan State, loses the puck. Oh, centers the hole, he shot, and goes over the net. Full centers, and the Red Wings intercept. Here's Brent Fedick through center ice, over the line, on the right wing. Back to Fedorov. Fedorov into the corner, now behind the net. He can fly, he turns, shoots, and the save by Riendo and Sergei Fedorov. Meanwhile, Scott Stevens mixing it up with Joe Kosher, I believe, and the play is stopped, and Ron Hogarth may well hand out a penalty or two. Well, we're short of the four-minute mark in the first period. The Red Wings have the lead. They have picked up a goal, and this is St. Louis Blues hockey. Power play, they're 5 of 24 in the power play against the Red Wings in five games, but they have not performed well in the power play lately, only one of their last seven. On the year, the Blues, not a very strong power play, and Detroit is not very strong penalty killing, but they score a lot of shorthanded goals. Ronnie carries the puck in, dumps it into the corner, hold there, digs it out, centers, and it's taken away and cleared out by Rick Zombo, the length of the ice. Oates will go back for it. He is on with Brown, Ronnie, Brindamore, and Hull. The Blues with a man advantage early in the first period. They trail the wings here in Detroit, one to nothing. Brown, a pass to Ronnie, in over the line, into the slot to Hull. He's knocked down. It comes to Brown. He let one go straight away, and that goes just wide. The rebound comes to the near corner. Jeff Brown with a puck to Ronnie. Out to the blue line. Adam Oates with a puck there. Near side to Ronnie. Back to Oates. Now to Ronnie, top of the right circle. He'll shoot right on the save by Shevelday. And then high stick by Zombo is Brindamore. There'll be a penalty. The puck centered. Hall has it in front of shot. Shevelday makes the save on Brett Hall. And Brindamore, who caught the stick of Detroit defenseman Rick Zombo in the face, is down on the ice. And referee Ron Hogarth is going to send Zombo off. And both teams now are taking a look here at Brindamore and Oates is pleading to Hogarth that it should be at least a five minute penalty on Zombo. The Blues are going to have a two man advantage and Zombo is furious. Well Brindamore is cut and if Zombo's not kicked out of the game I don't understand why. On the play Brindamore was going for the rebound and he was knocked down and then oh Zombo just slashed him right in the nose and he is bleeding Ken and I don't think there's any reason for any kind of subjectivity here, Zombo should be kicked out. I mean, he slashed him right on the nose. And you saw the blood on the towel, yet Zombo's not kicked out. I don't understand. He'll pick up a two-minute penalty. There's 57 seconds left in the Joey Kosher penalty. That's a joke. I mean, he hit him right minutes. in the nose. That is a joke. He knocked him down and then slashed him right in the nose. And he gets a two-minute slashing penalty. I'm sorry, but I can't understand that. Now the Blues get ready for the faceoff. Hall with Court Hall and Ronnie. Brown and Oates are on the point, so the Blues have a good chance to tie it here. Eiserman will skate over to the bench. And Brian Murray, the Red Wing coach and general manager, says something to him. Well, I can't believe you don't at least get five minutes. How do you not get five? He should be kicked out of the game. He swung a stick at Brindamore and cut him in the nose. It wasn't inadvertent. And he only gets a two-minute minor. That is, to me, unbelievable. From the faceoff, the Red Wings clear at the length of the ice. Eiserman is on with Burr and Green, the lone defenseman. A two-man Blues advantage, trailing it one to nothing. At center ice, the Blues are stopped. Brown back in his own end. Four checked by Eiserman. Gives it to Ronnie. Left wing to Oates. He's got a lot of room over the line. He sets up in front to Courtney. And he fans as he attempts a shot. Ronnie back to Brown at the right point. Over on the left side to Hall. Now back to Jeff Brown. The Blues with a two man advantage. Brown side of the net in front to Courtney. A shot and that stop. As Hall from the side of the net set up Courtney. Here's Oates now at the right point. Over to Brown. Ten seconds left in the two-man advantage. Two Oates to Ronnie. He'll shoot. Great save by Shevelday on Ronnie. Five seconds in the two-man advantage. Brown to Hall. The Courtnall. He shoots. He scores. Jeff Courtnall straight away in the slot. Scores to tie it at one. And he scored, I believe, just after. Kosher came on. We'll have to see. It's a very, very close. Kosher had to be ready to come on when the goal was scored. 
Well, the Blues worked it around well, got the puck in front. Courtneau was robbed earlier from the exact same spot, but this time he puts it top shelf, and he beats Chevalde, who I think got a piece of the drive. Hall centered the puck, and Courtneau, a one-timer, off Chevalde's left glove into the net, and the Blues have tied the game at one. That initial... Uh... The penalty was at 3.48 and the goal at 5.48. Had the Blues scored a second earlier, they would still have a one-man advantage. But Kosher technically was out of the penalty box and the goal was scored with Zombo in the box. So now the Red Wings are back at full strength. Unfortunate for the Blues, they couldn't have scored a second or two earlier and still have a, at least a minute left in a power play. Cardinal gets the goal as 15th from Hall and Brown at 5.48. And for Courtneau, his first goal in 11 games, the last goal he scored prior to tonight was December 29th against the Flyers. Not yet six minutes into the hockey game. A big one in Detroit, and it's 1-1. The Red Wings shoot the puck in. David Barr taken out by Paul Cavallini. A battle for the puck in the corner. Eve Racine, the young defenseman, moves up, tries to center, can't against Snips. And it's in the corner. McLean beaten to the puck. He takes out Barr, though, and that allows Mahar to get it to... Harold snaps the former Red Wing. He shoots the puck in it, bangs out of the corner in front, played by Shovel Day to Eves Racine. Now out at center ice, the Red Wings, and it's shot in by the veteran, Mark Habshot, into the corner. McLean back for it, bumped by Habshot. Four players fight for the puck in the corner. It's centered. Snaps gets it and loses it to Randy McKay, but he's unable to control the puck well enough to get a shot. He leaves it for Barr, who's checked by McLean. And Mahar unable to clear, moving in. Racine from the left point, and a shot, and a save by Riendo. And then McKay and Snaps in front with their sticks in antagonizing positions. And then everyone mills around, but nothing really happens. Harold Snaps, they love him here in Detroit. It's the Blues one, and the Red Wings one here in the first period. Well, McKay and Steps get high sticking minors at 643. Scratch for tonight from the Blues, Ron Wilson, Robert Dirk, and Herb Ragland remains back in St. Louis. Paul Cavallini is back in action tonight. He missed 13 games with that finger injury. So he is back in the lineup after suffering that injury against the Blackhawks December 22nd. The Blues control the faceoff in their end. Marwa clears it out. And the puck back in the Detroit zone. Huda gets it ahead to Iserman. Three on three at the Blues line. Iserman moves in, getting around Featherstone, but Marowak comes back to save the day with a poke check, and he ends up with a puck. Mario Marowak, the veteran NHLer. Three on three, leading it at center ice. Long shot wide of the net. And Sutter plays the puck along the far board. Centers, it's loose in front. Lowry a shot, the save. Lowry again, a wrist shot, he scores! Dave Lowry on a second effort. And the Blues get two quick goals to take the lead here in Detroit, two to one. Well, Lowry owns the Red Wings this year. That's his fifth goal against Detroit this year in his sixth game. And just hard work by Dave Lowry. He was stopped on the first opportunity, got the puck again after his initial shot was kicked out. And Lowry, with some good perseverance, picked it up and beat Chevrolet low to the stick side. And for Dave Lowry, that is goal number 11 on the year. And he has five against the Red Wings. So he loves to play against his hockey club. Detroit moves in quickly from the center ice faceoff. Then they lose the puck. Here's Hall to center ice. A pass behind Brindamore. And a battle for the puck at center ice. Stevens gets it, shovels it in. Rick Green, the veteran, is back for it. Around on the near wing to Fettick. Fettick at center ice to Fedorov. Sergei Fedorov back to Fettick over the line on the left wing. Now the Soviet player Fedorov gets it and loses the puck. Brett Hull takes it away, leaving it in the corner for Captain Scott Stevens. He's checked, and the puck controlled by Brown. Here come the Blues on the attack. Brown works in over the Detroit line, shoots the puck into the corner, and Chris Longo goes after it. Then the Blues intercept, and the centering pass for Brindamore knocked away back to the point. It's centered again, and Green intercepts. And Stevens and the Red Wing player Kosher bump and shove a bit, and Ron Hogarth, without a whole lot happening, stops play and points at both of them. Both of you go off. Scott Stevens and Joe Kosher of the Red Wings. Ron Hogarth 
with that move clearly trying to set a tone here in this first period. Well they were involved earlier in the period Ken down beside the Blues net. And Hogarth certainly, like you said, trying to make sure things don't get out of control here. Not dressed tonight for the Red Wings. Johan Garpenloff, John Shabbat, rookie Keith Primo scratched. And the Red Wings have a host of injured players. Glenn Hanlon has a broken hand. Jimmy Carson, a knee injury. Brad McCrimmon, an ankle problem. And Steve Chason has a foot injury. And uh, Brian Murray, the Red Wings coach, was bemoaning the fact before the game tonight to us Ken that this team has been shorthanded all year long they've been missing four five or six players with injuries all year long as he says I just don't have this team where I want it to be he can't get set lines can't get a set lineup and uh, he's a bit frustrated by it he expected to be in better position by this point in the season than he is by the way that last blues goal Lowry is 11th from Sutter and Marwa at 7 17. And that for Dave Lowry, his first goal in nine games. So he breaks a bit of a slump like Courtney did earlier. Play resumes, and Detroit is shorthanded. A two minute penalty to Stevens, and a pair of minors to Kosher. Blues on the power play. Here's Hull cutting in on the right wing, centers into the slot, and the puck deflects to center ice. Back forward is Oates. Oates on with Brown. Ronnie, Hull. And Gino Cavallini, who takes the pass, goes to the far boards in the Detroit end, leaves the puck, and comes back to Jeff Brown. He'll shoot, and that one is knocked wide, and ends up in the pads of Chevelday, the Detroit goalie. And he holds it for a faceoff as the Blues have a minute 27 to go in the power play, dropping behind 1 0 early, and they've come back with a pair of goals to take the lead. Young Tim Shevelday, who has been a workhorse in Nets this year for Detroit, he was sort of funny uh, yesterday and today with his comments about facing Brett Hull. Basically, he said, I'll just do the best I can, and uh, if Hull scores, what can you do? And Brian Murray didn't really have any great answers either for stopping Brett Hull. But I've noticed so far, Ken, whenever Brett Hull's been on the ice at even strength, Fedorov, the center, has moved over to the wing, and he shadowed Brett Hull. Face off in the Detroit end. The Blues have the man advantage. Brown a shot from the point. Tipped wide. Here's Hull along the boards. Out to the right point to Oates. His shot hits his teammate Brindamore and comes to center ice. Detroit killing the penalty with Habscheid, Iserman, Longo, and Green. Adam Oates carries through center ice. Stops over the blue line. Setting it up with a minute to go in the man advantage. Into the corner. Brindamore back to Oates. Centering to Hull. A shot. That's knocked down. They can't clear. Brown a driving score. Jeff Brown, a power play goal, and that makes it three to one, St. Louis. That shot slowed up, changed directions a bit, totally handcuffing Tim Shevelday. And Brown makes it three one Blues. Well, Brown half fanned on the shot after Hull in front was stopped. The Red Wing player, Luongo, cleared it right to Brown, and then it was. A rather weak shot from the Blues defenseman. But that was not a hard drive at all. It might have hit someone in front as Luongo went down. And Chevrolet kicked out his left leg and just missed it, Ken. And that was more like a changeup in baseball, which beat Chevrolet. A power play goal for Jeff Brown is eighth here at 9-16 of the first period. The Blues get three very quick goals. The Red Wings. Brian Murray, especially their coach, and the fans are unhappy with these penalty calls by referee Ron Hogarth. And he just might have called another one on the Red Wings for unsportsmanlike conduct. They're announcing the goal now. Brown gets the goal. Hull gets an assist, his second assist, and Brindamore assists as well. But the Red Wings have picked up another minor. So obviously they're frustrated with the officiating tonight. And the Blues will get another power play. And they have a 3-1 lead. Well, Brian Murray is known for his hot temper, and he displayed it there. Burr scored early for Detroit at 231. Courtnall tied it at 548. Lowry scores at 713. And Brown now at 916. 
The Blues four and one this year against Detroit. Two victories and a loss here at Joe Louis Arena. Detroit again shorthanded. Paul Isabard is serving the penalty. And from center ice, the Blues control the puck. Brown, a long pass for Hull too far, but the puck goes right to Shevelday. Here's Hull in the corner. He's taken out. And the Red Wings get the puck, and Sean Burr shoots at the length of the ice. Fedek and Burr up front for the Detroit Red Wings. Racine is on defense with Zombo, and here come the Blues. The charge led by Oates. Left wing to Brindamore, cutting it in front to Oates. A shot on! Somehow Shevelday keeps that one out. And the net comes loose behind the Detroit goaltender. Oh, baby, that one seemed to be very near the goal line. Shevel Day, in an acrobatic manner, had to come up and make a big, big save. Well, Brindamore carried the puck in on left wing, and Oates went to the net, and he had a wide open net. I can't believe he missed it. He missed the entire net. Ronning thought it was in. And then the Red Wing net was knocked loose, but Oates won't get a better chance than that. Brindamore, a great pass. He held the puck for the exact amount of time that was required, and Oates missed it with a wide open net. It should be 4-1. Looked like Chevelday got his left arm on it, keeping it from going in, deflected it off the post. And how close can you come? Blues have a minute 20 to go in their man advantage. They lead it 3-1 in the first period. In the corner, Adam Oates. He leaves it behind the net for Jeff Courtnall. Hull is in the slot. Left point to Paul Cavallini. He'll play it behind the net. Now into the near corner. Adam Oates centers, and he fans on the centering pass, and Detroit works to center ice. David Barr, the one-time Blues player, in over the line and over skates the puck. And it's taken by Oates. Two on two with Hall. And Courtnall, a pass to Courtnall, a great shot to save. Brown keeps the puck in over to Courtnall on the left side. In the corner to Hall. Back to the left point. Paul Cavallini having trouble with the puck. Now a bouncing puck. Hall can't keep it in, and the Red Wings clear to center ice. 40 seconds to go in the Blues power play. Over the line, it's dropped to Oates, then to Hall. He gets a shot that's deflected well into the corner. Fettick falls down for Detroit. Zombo. Takes out one man, Oates, the puck chopped out, and it'll slide the length of the ice. The Blues with 22 seconds left in the power play. We end the way out of the crease to steer it away from Bird. And Jeff Brown controls the puck in his own end over to Paul Cavallini. His pass is behind Cortinall at the red line. He's hit by Dallas. A feed to Fettick, cutting in. He can't get a shot, and there'll be a penalty against Paul Cavallini. And there may be a penalty shot. They're going to call a penalty shot as a Detroit player broke in behind the Blues defense. And Brent Fettick was knocked down by Paul Cavallini. It was an initially poor pass at center ice that led to the Red Wings opportunity. Well, the rule says you must be in complete clear of everyone else. And I don't know if he was by Paul Cavallini in the clear completely. I'll tell you what. He had about a half a step on Cavallini, but no more, Ken. No, that's uh, obviously a judgment call, and uh, Ron Hogarth interprets it as he was completely in the clear. When it comes to penalty shots, goaltenders really have the edge. This season, they have had the edge by just a small margin. There have been 13 penalty shots and five goals scored. So the advantage is with a goalie. In this case, Vincent Riendo. Brent Fettick, the 23-year-old winger, approaches the puck. Here he comes. The Blues lead 3-1. Fettick moves in, fake shoots, and Riendo makes the save as the Red Wings' Brent Fettick is unsuccessful on the penalty shot here with 8.47 remaining in the first period. Well, Riendo did not move. That was the key. He made Fettick make the first move and Pettick is a very good wrist shot he was a great scorer in junior hockey and he tried to go between the legs and Riendo made the save Pettick was thinking shot all the way and he tried to go glove side but Riendo made the save that's the first penalty shot against the Blues this year and the first since April 8th of 89 when Neil Broughton scored in the playoffs against Greg Millen the last time during the regular season the Opposition had a penalty shot against the Blues back in 1988, so it's been a few years. Now Isabard is back on. The Red Wings are at full strength. They had the penalty shot while they were shorthanded. The Blues work to center ice. 
A pass for Sutter tipped away. He's still able to shoot it in. Dallas back for the Red Wings. Over to Huda. Up it comes on the right wing. Not a pedic at center ice. He bumps with Sutter. Meanwhile, the puck in the blue zone, and Basson has it. Off the boards for Lowry. He clears the center ice, and Fedek is right there, winds up and drills it right back in. Marois on the near board. Checked by Hatshai. Gives the puck to Sutter. Up to Basson. He's checked from behind, and Sutter moves out, and there'll be a penalty. There'll be a penalty call. Basson was hit from behind, and he may have retaliated. We'll just have to wait and see what Ron Hogarth calls, and it will be a penalty against Bob Basson. 8 one to go in the first period. It's the Blues 3 and the Red Wings 1. This is St. Louis Blues. Blues lead 3-1, but Basson gets a slashing minor here at 11:59. The Red Wings on the power play this year. They've been terrible all year long. Last overall, only 13%. They've had a tough time. Here they come. Iserman over the line. Gives it to Racine. And a low shot stopped by Riendo. And the puck off Vince's stick and into the crowd. This Detroit power play of late successful only once in their last 24 man advantages. So they have really, really struggled. And they're down 3-1 here in the first period of this game. 13%. The next worst, Montreal at 16%, so they are 3% worse than the 20th place team. The Blues penalty killing this year, it's been slipping the last month and a half. They're now seventh overall, just under 83%. Here's the Detroit power play. Racine mishandles the puck at the blue line, but gets it back out at center ice. Then he loses it to Mahar. He's spun around. Here's Marois moving in on the right side. He'll just shove the puck behind the Detroit net. A minute 30 to go in the Basson penalty. Sergei Fedorov, number 91 for the Red Wings. Right wing to big Bob Probert. He leaves it along the boards for Fedorov. Left point to Racine. Hab shines at the right point. Here's Eiserman taking the pass. Back to Racine. Shot blocked by Lowry. And the puck shot the length of the ice by Oates. Red Wings are back for it. Blues have... Sutter and Oates up front. Stevens and Paul Cavallini now on defense while they're shorthanded. Mark Havshai with the puck. The ex-Oiler and North Star. He gets over the red line, shoots it in. Riendo can't stop the puck behind the net. Probert in the corner, checked by Stevens. Iserman moves in, gets the puck, tries to get it back to the point and can't. It finally comes back to Havshai. He gets it ahead to Probert in the corner. He's knocked down. Here's Fetter off behind the net, out to Havshai. He can't get a shot away. 35 seconds left in the Blues penalty. A Red Wing pass broken up nicely by Stevens, and he clears the puck to center ice, and Eves Racine takes over. The Red Wing's 21-year-old defenseman. A pass up to Fedorov over the line. Right side into the corner. Red Wings keeping possession. Fedorov along the boards. Now out to the left point. Dallas, his shot. That's deflected off the side of the net. Ten seconds until Basson is back. Sutter shoots the puck to center ice. It's knocked down there by Chris Longo. He gets it over the line, and it's kept in by Probert. Eisenman goes to the net. The pass to him, and he shoots it wide, one-timing it. Better off back to the point. Another shot off the skate of Paul Cavallini, and the Blues are at full strength. Basson on the ice gets the puck. Blues three on three into the Detroit zone. Sutter in front of him, scoring on the play is the... Little guy Rick Mahar, unbelievable play as the Blues just get back to full strength. And a beautiful setup pass in front for Mahar, and Rick Mahar makes it 4-1. to one. Great pass by Sutter on a 3-on-2. Both Red Wings defensemen or defenders came over and took Sutter and Basson, and that left Mahar wide open. And he made a nice tip in under Shevel Day, but both Red Wing defenders come over and take the two blues, and that leaves Mahar wide open. And he scores to make it 4 1 here at 14 14 of the third period. But a bad defensive play there by Detroit, and a nice play by Mahar to go to the net, his third goal of the year. It looked like the Red Wings had the play well contained, but they didn't make the right moves. Here comes Detroit. Right from the faceoff, a shot stopped by Riendo. Red Wings keep it in in the corner. Sean Burr. Now he's shoved, and Ronning gets the puck and backhands it through center ice into the Detroit zone. Rick Zombo, a veteran out of the University of North Dakota, 
Sends a pass at center ice that's too far. It goes the length of the ice. They wave off icing. 5.15 to go in the first period. A good one for the Blues. Featherstone in trouble, loses the puck. In front, Barr shoots and scores! David Barr scores on a giveaway. And the Wings get one back, and it's 4-2 Blues. Well, you mentioned it was a giveaway. As the Blues had control, Featherstone, looking for some help, had his stick held up, and then he got the puck back but couldn't clear it. And Barr, from a very, really not a great scoring opportunity, beats Riendo between his legs as that shot was right on the ice. And Vince did not have the stick down between the legs, and it goes between his legs at 14.50. And Barr gets number 10. And that goal coming only 36 seconds after Mahar had scored. So that's a tough one to give up. David Barr, the 30-year-old, gets the goal. And the Red Wings have the puck. Fedorov gets it to Kosher, cutting in and puts it back. And he hits one off the heel of his stick that goes wide of the Blues goal. And the Blues gain possession. Brown, nice pass. Up the middle to Brindamore. Trying to move in around Longo. Pulls up in the Detroit zone. Centers, and it's intercepted by Joe Kosher. Here's Detroit on the attack. As Kosher's taken out, Longo, the defenseman moving in. Bumps off Scott Stevens, then taken out in the corner. Hall gets the puck. Can't clear it out. Kept in by Fedorov, who centers. Brown can't clear. Here's Fedek with Kosher in front. And the pass for Kosher is broken up by Jeff Brown. Adam Oates gets the puck. It's much too wide open for the Blues. Long pass for Hall. Here he comes over the line on the right wing. He stops. Makes one good move, but can't get around Fedorov, who pokes the puck away, and it slides back near Vince Riendo. 4-12 remaining in the first period. The Blues' lead is 4-2. Up it comes to Oates. Oates over the line. A pass in front for Hall. And that's broken up. Here comes Detroit back. Sheldon Kennedy over the line. Gives it to Bobby Dallas. Now to Gerard Gallant in the corner. Behind the net it comes. Dallas is open in front. Wheeling in front. Kennedy a shot. The save. A rebound by Iserman. And Riendo makes another save. And holds the puck for a faceoff. At Joe Louis Arena, it's the Blues 4 and the Red Wings 2. And the Red Wings came in this game far too wide open for the Blues liking right now. Face off in the St. Louis end. Paul Cavallini gets the puck. It hits Gallant, then snaps his drill down. Here come the Blues. Kennedy really gave Snaps a ride. McLean over the line, trying to get the puck through to Mahar. McLean was drilled down. Mahar was interfered with. No penalty. And the Red Wings start out of their own end. Bobby Dollars played with the Canadian national team last season. Shoots it in. Paul Cavallini back for the puck. Gives it to McLean in the corner. He's in trouble, losing it. In front, Gallant. Gets a shot that hits Iserman in the skate and goes to the far board. Tuda moves in. The defenseman gets it to Kennedy. He wheels, centers, and Paul McLean intercepts and clears the puck out off the boards. Played by Dallas, and he spins Courtnall down. Here's Gerard Gallant for Detroit to Iserman in over the line, a backhand shot. That's blocked at the defense on a good play. And McLean clears the zone again. 2.50 to go. First period, 4-2 Blues. Detroit shoots it in. Marois back to touch it. And that's an icing call against the Red Wings. Four to two, the Blues lead it. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Right from the faceoff, Marois shot from the point. A good pad saved by Chevelday. And the wings are back. David Barr over the line. Pulls up at the right point. Backhands the puck through the slot. No one there for Detroit. And Marois clears the puck out again. There's 2.25 remaining in the first period. Dombo to the wings back. Leaves the puck near his net. David Barr has it. He smashes it around the far side. Lowry intercepts and a shot. Knocked down in front by Sutter. Oh, a drive. That stopped. Sutter again. A pass in front. And Lowry unable to get a stick on the puck. Randy McKay for Detroit. Can't get it out. Sutter keeps it in to Lowry. He kicks the puck into the corner. He's taken out there by Zombo who goes down. Sutter in a wrestling match. Racine down. Gets up. Now six players in the corner battling for the puck. Lowry and Zombo in the heart of it. And they freeze the puck with their skates to stop play. With a minute 51 to go here in the period. Courtnall, Lowry, Brown, and Mahar have all scored for the Blues.
Face off of the Detroit and the Blues control the puck. Hall had a chance in front and the shot was deflected wide. Here's a centering pass and that's deflected away by Shovel Day, the Red Wing goalie. Blues doing some good forechecking. Hall and Oates along with Gino Cavallini. Oates goes down and Fedorov gets the puck. The 21-year-old Soviet to the checkered red line. He makes a move to the blue line, then decides to hold up. He's got a teammate, Kosher, in over the line, plays it back to the defense. Now Huda to Fedek on the left side, trying to move in. Then he's taken out, runs into Riendo as he's spun down by Paul Cavallini. Hall can't get the puck out, and Oates does. Two Hall to Paul Cavallini, into the Detroit end. He spins with a pass for his brother, and Gino crunch to the boards. Oates can't play the puck. He's tied up by Rick Green with under a minute to go in the first period. Up it comes on the boards to Fedek. He tips it to center ice. Paul Cavallini with it, loses it. Kosher gets it, plays it rink wide. Onto the stick of Huda, who ran into the referee Hogarth, and that gets the crowd excited. And finally, play stopped right below us in front of the penalty bench. A wrestling match. I believe Joey Kosher is one of the players involved. And one of the Blues players in the midst of it also. That might be Gino Cavallini. I think it was. And it is. Mike Kosher's been a busy man tonight. Earlier, he was jostling with Harold Snaps and Scott Stevens and lots of other players. Earlier, Gino Cavallini really bumped hard in the corner, but Luongo, the rookie, a native of Detroit, took the worst of that hit, and he went down. Remember, it makes good sense to drink responsibly. Know when to say when. A reminder from Budweiser. Earlier, Brent Fedek cut in. He lost the puck, but he continued on and ran right over Randy. And that's something goaltenders have been complaining about all year long, Ken. Forwards and defensemen, for that matter, really have no more concern for the goaltender's crease anymore. They go in there at will. Gino Cavallini and Kosher each get two-minute minors. There's under a minute to go in this first period. A rather disjointed period, some interesting penalties called and with 27 seconds to go and the Blues up 4-2 they shoot the puck in. Detroit has it. Moving out Dallas up to Bird. A pass for Isabart tipped in. Probert after it but he's beaten to the puck. It's cleared around the boards by Momesso who may be making his first appearance of the game. And the Wings lose it. Oates comes to McLean with it. McLean along the near boards bounces it in wide of the Detroit net. Three seconds to go. Wings control it. Huda shoots it to center ice, and there's the horn. That is the end of the opening period here at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit as the Blues drop behind early on a Sean Burr goal at 231, but four straight Blues goals. Courtnall, Lowry, Brown, and Mahar, two of them on the power play, and then a goal by David Barr to round out the scoring. With Ken Wilson, John Kelly back live in Detroit. Second period underway. The Blues lead 4-2, but they're shorthanded here. Paul McLean picked up a rocking minor at the 20-minute mark of the first period. Now the Red Wings working in the power play. Here's Probert behind the goal for Iserman in front. A shot by Racine, and Riendo made a pad save. Now Brown trying to clear it. He does by Racine, and the puck slides down the ice. Blues up 4-2, shorthanded. Detroit 0 for 1 in the power play tonight. Here's Habshide back to center ice. He'll drive it in. Riendo missed it. Now Probert on right wing. He was checked. Basson can't clear it. Now Fetter off behind the goal for Iserman. Iserman back on the point for Racine. Checked by Sutter. And Sutter's got a breakaway. Here he comes. Rich Sutter in alone. A shot. He scores! A short-handed goal for Rich Sutter. And the Blues lead 5-2. Has he been something against the Red Wings? 13th goal of the season for Rich Sutter. Would you believe that a half dozen of them, six of his 13 goals, have been against Detroit? Brian Murray today commenting, we don't have to worry about Hall. We've got to worry about Rich Sutter. Shorthanded, he gets a breakaway. Looks like he's going to shoot. No. Chevalier makes the move, and all that Sutter has to do is shift to his backhand and slide the puck into the wide open net. He got Chevalier to feel as though he were going to let the wrist shot go, and that makes it 5 2 St. Louis. Sutter gets his 13th of the year, and all of last year, 
Rich Sutter with Vancouver and St. Louis had only 11 goals. That's a big one. It makes it 5-2. Red Wings on a power play for another 50 seconds. They work it in. But behind the goal, Basson bumps a man. Then Kennedy ran over Paul Cavallini, a shot by Luongo, and a glove saved by Riendo, and he holds on. So that goal by Sutter, unassisted, at 52 seconds. A shorthanded goal, only the Blues, fifth shorthanded goal, and Ken, he showed excellent speed. Well, he did a good job. He broke away when you thought the Detroit player might catch up with him, and did a very nice job getting goaltender Shevel Day to make the first move. Well, I thought maybe that the game would settle down a little bit here, John. But the first uh, minute and 20 seconds has certainly given no indication, but it's a very comfortable now three-goal Blues lead. They can go and play some defense. Blues short-handed for 35 seconds. They clear it down the ice. Luongo, the rookie, behind his own goal. Out of his own zone. Right wing for Isabart. He'll tip one behind the Blues goal. Stevens and Gallant fight for it. Now it's Doug Free. It comes in front, but Sutter there to knock it away. Held in by Luongo. Pass behind the goal. Merwa there, and he shoots it around the boards, and it goes down the ice. Only seven seconds left in McLean's minor. Blues lead 5-2, two, two minutes into this second period. Now McLean back on. Kennedy at center ice for Detroit. Into the Blues zone, but it was offside as the Blues are back at full strength. We'd like to remind Blues fans that, well, we'll get back to that in a second. This is St. Brown, Mahar, and Sutter have all scored here, and it's still early in the second period. And Hall has not scored a goal, believe it or not. Still two away from the 50-goal mark. Now Hall on the ice. That center ice to Brindamore. He works down the left wing side. Up by Zombo. Now Zombo behind the net for Randy McKay. Up the boards to Barr. He was knocked down by Paul Cavallini. It comes in front. Hall was there. Now he plays one behind the goal. Brindamore bumps Green. It is Oates, so it gets the loose puck. Now for Brindamore, back in the point. Snep kept it in for Oates. In front to Hall. And he missed the pass in front. And Dave Barr back for the Red Wings. He has a goal tonight. Barr for McKay. Spun around in the slot. Puck loose there. Banged away. Kept in left point by Green. Into the far corner. Here's Barr centering one. Broken up and back is Hall. Two on two to center. Hall in and right way. Now he stops. Try to center one off a leg. And the puck caroms back to center. The Blues lead 5-2. Here's Brown at his own line. Pass to Cliff Ronning. Too far. Goes on goal. And Chevalier sets it up. Green a pass up the boards. Here's Barr on left wing. Checked by Ronning. Mameso kept it in. Into Ronning behind the goal. He puts it back in front. It's loose there. And cleared away by the Red Wings. Better off. Near the line. Held in by Mameso. Zombo back in the corner. He puts it back in a big pile up there. And now the Red Wings take over as Zombo works it ahead on left wing. For Fedek, checked at center by Brown. And in comes Gino Cavallini on left wing. Now into the corner for Ronnie. Behind the goal for Gino Cavallini. Two Red Wings on him. Now a loose puck on the far side. Fedek there, bumped by Mameso. Blues doing a good job of four checking here. Now five players jam up. And they hold it for a face-off. I started to say a few minutes ago, you can now look for your chance to enter a new contest. It's called the Black and Blue Rendezvous Contest. Entry forms can be found in the travel section of this Sunday's St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Winners can win two tickets to a Blue Chicago game in Chicago and St. Louis, among other prizes. The contest, sponsored by the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Southwest Airlines, the St. Louis Blues, and the Drake Hotel. But look for the travel section in Sunday's post to enter the contest. Blues lead 5-2. Four minutes and 10 seconds into this second period. Now the Red Wings attacking here behind the Blues goal, but Basson stole the puck. Up on left wing for Lowry. Huda pinches in for the right point. Now Basson trying to dig it free. Kennedy kept it in a weak shot, and a stick saved by Riendo. And Merwa clears it off a stick, and it goes over the glass. 5-2 for the Blues. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. 
Off the draw, Kennedy, a quick shot, and Riendo a pad save. The Blues still lead 5-2. 15-22 to go in the second period. Blues clear one to center. Dallas for Detroit. He lost it to Brett Hull. Hull at center. Checked on the play. And Kennedy back for Detroit across the line, but Snep knocked it away. And Brindamore in left wing. Can't clear it away. Puck shot to the far side. Back on the point. Dallas behind the Blues goal. It comes in front, but Paul Cavalini knocked it away. Right point, Huda kept it in. Into the corner, now back in front. Here's Dallas on that right point behind the goal for Kennedy. He tried to center, he did, but Oates broke it up. And now Brindamore feeds Hall at center. One man back, Hall in on right wing. He stops. Now for Brindamore in the far corner. Meanwhile, Hall knocked down. Right point, Marowak can't hold it in. And the puck at center ice. Probert knocked down. Now a loose puck taken by Oates to Brindamore. In on left wing to Hall. Shot blocked. Now Brindamore behind the goal. Centers it. Back to Featherstone. A shot. And a save by Chevalier. Right point. Marowak kept it in. Now to Brindamore. Puts it right through the goal crease. Here's Featherstone behind the goal for Rose to Hall. A shot blocked. Rebound in front there. Then cleared away by Gallant. So two or three good chances for the Blues. That center, Oates knocks it down. In across the Red Wing line to Courtnell. And that was just offside at the line. Well, you can own a deluxe satellite system for $1,995 cash and carry, and shipment can be sent anywhere in the U.S. Call Arnold Satellite Systems at 1-800-727-2911 for your deluxe satellite system. Let's pause five seconds for station ID. This is St. Louis Blues. Second period, a shorthanded goal at the 52-second mark by Rich Sutter, and it's 5-2 Blues. And they played much better here in this second period defensively. Now off the draw at center ice, Mahar checked at the Red Wing line. Loose puck, Courtnell gets it, but he lost his stick as Racine knocked Courtnell's stick out of his hands. And the puck cleared down the ice. Featherstone back for the Blues. Behind the goal to Merwa. Merwa on right wing, can't clear it. Held in, a shot. Savory and a rebound. Eisenbart there. In front, it goes. And cleared away by Merwa. Oriendo was down there. As the Blues. Merwa clears the center for Courtneau. Now to Mahar across the line. Three on two. Mahar in on left wing. Now behind the goal. Out the other side. Can't center. Now he does to Brown. And Brown can't shoot the puck. And it's cleared away to center ice by the Red Wings. Seven minutes into the second period. The Blues lead 5-2. Here's Courtneau back on left wing. In front. Nemesso tipped it just wide. Now the puck in front of the net again. Courtneau over skates it as the Red Wings are very careless in their own end. But back to center. There's Sean Bird. He can't go around Jeff Brown. Stevens takes a check behind the goal. The Blues work it ahead to Ronnie at center ice. Hits the Red Wing line. Drop pass to Courtneau. Courtneau in front lost the puck. And here is Sean Burr at center for Habshai into the St. Louis zone. Habshai back on the point. Now it's knocked away by Mimeso. And the puck comes to center. Zombo there for Detroit. Over for Dave Barr. He'll rifle one in. Gino Cavalli back in the near corner for the Blues around the boards. Mimeso on right wing takes a check. And then he gets the puck at center ice for Gino Cavallini. Hits the Red Wing line. A shot. And a stick save by Chevalier. Loose puck behind the goal. Big hit by Gino Cavallini at center to Brown. In front, missed the pass. And the puck sent to center ice. Back come the Red Wings. Zombo for half shot. He'll dump it in. And the Blues who lead 5-2 are back. Brown to steps on left wing. That center off Lowry stick. Then Dallas plays one back to the Red Wing or the Blues line. Now Brown ahead. Off a stick. Huda gets it for Detroit across the line, but Fedek was in offside on left wing. The Blues lead 5-2. Get an early shorthanded goal by Rich Sutter to build their lead to three. The team is skating better, playing better defense. Seems to have a better idea in this period of what they're trying to do in the game, not giving Detroit a lot of room. And you've seen many good examples in this second period of the big Blues forwards doing some excellent forechecking and handling the Red Wing defenseman near the Detroit goal. Lots of Blues fans here tonight. Among them Jim Mueller and Rick Forshee from St. Louis. 
Also Mark Smith here along with Russell Corti, Pat Owens, and Dan Bird cheering on the Blues. It's 5-2 St. Louis. Blues clear it in. Back is Huda behind his net. Sutter knocked it away, and it just about went up in the air into the net over Chevalier's head. What a weird bounce there. Now Bass in far corner. Runs over Fedek. Lowry gets it, centers it, but Dallas knocked it away. As bodies fly all over in that Red Wing zone. Puck cleared out to center, played back in by Paul Cavallini, and then Kosher and Sutter go down in a heap. And then Basson comes in. Now Lowry and Kosher get their sticks up. That Kosher has been involved with everyone except the trainer against the Blues tonight. And Mike Foga might get into it yet. He's not bashful, no question about it. The whistle came because of a hand pass. Paul Cavallini knocking the puck down, and the Blues player was the next one to touch it. And when it was touched by Sutter, the whistle blew. Kosher wrestling him down. It is 5-2 St. Louis. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Back live in Detroit, a big crowd tonight, but they've been silenced. The Blues lead 5-2. 10.50 to go in the second period. Now at center ice, the Red Wings pick up a loose puck. Kennedy across the line for Gallant, a wrist shot, and that's just wide. Featherstone back in the near corner. He's checked by Kennedy. Gallant is there as well, but it's poked away. And Brindamore at his own line to haul it center, but it's knocked away by Zombo. He tried to send Eiserman in, broken up. And Oates on right wing back for the Blues. In his own zone for Marwa. Blues have to go back here. Featherstone behind the net. His pass knocked down by Eiserman. Can't center it. Now Eiserman has it again. Behind the goal for Gallant. Back in front, broken up though. And here come the Blues. Brindamore ahead. Into Hull on right wing. Taken out by Green. Now behind the goal. Red Wings cleared around the boards. And the puck slides to center. In case you've just joined us, Hull has not scored a goal, but he does have two assists tonight as the Blues lead 5-2. Now the Red Wings back at center. Here's Eiserman across the line. Eiserman on right wing. Looks in front, a pass. Knocked down by Oates. Eiserman again. Back on the right point for Racine. A shot. Knocked down by Brown. And the Blues, Stevens clears it down the ice. It goes through the goal crease, so there's no icing. Now nine and a half minutes to go in the period. Blues have a three-goal lead. Red Wings at center. Sean Burr in for Racine in on left wing. Now to the far corner. Center's one tipped away. And Mahar picks it up. Pass for Kortnil off his stick to center. Now a loose puck taken by Stevens. Up to Kortnil across the line. He has a goal tonight. Kortnil in the corner. Now Mahar there can't find it. And Racine for Detroit at his own line. That center for Burr ahead. In for Isabart. Beats one man, a bad angle shot. And Riendo a stick save. And Stevens gets it for the Blues. He was held up. Can't clear it away. Isabart did a good job. Now Sean Burr in there. Burr centers it, but Paul Cavani right there. And back come the Blues, two on two. Courtnell the center ice. Good pass to Stevens, but McLean was in offside on right wing, and then Probert knocked Stevens down. And the Blues captain gets up and has words with big top Probert. It's 5-2 for the Blues. This is St. Louis Blues. At home, you can purchase tickets by calling dial ticks at 434-6600 and charging your tickets. Blues lead 5-2. Eight and a half minutes to go in the second period. It's been a wild one here tonight. Red Wings off the draw, come to center. Here's Habscheid on right wing, dumps it in. Brando left it back there for Paul Cavallini. Around on right wing to Cliff Ronning. He comes to center. Now for Gino Cavallini across the line. He took a check from Huda and Habscheid for the Red Wings. That's center for Dave Barr. Here's Barr across the line. Now chase back to center. Barr gets it on right wing now. Snaps on him. And Big Harold, the former Red Wing, takes him out. In behind the Blues goal, McKay gets it for Detroit. McKay knocked down. Back to Dallas, a shot. And that was wide. And Gino Cavalli chops one to center. Oh, Mameso nearly had a break. 
Now he gets the puck at center. Good pass to Ronnie across the line. Here's little Cliff running in the slot. A drive. Say rebound. Paul Cavalini shoots and scores. Paul Cavalini on the rebound. And it's 6-2 for the Blues. And that's a nice comeback present for Paul Cavalini. Welcome back, number 14. The Blues coaching staff keeps telling those defensemen, move up offensively in the play. Cliff Ronning does some very nice things here. He tries to set up Oates moving to his left. Doesn't have a play. Makes a shot. Chevelday, the pad save. McKay goes right past the puck. And Paul Cavallini just buries it to make it 6-2. to two. Paul Cavallini comes back with the goal. Now the Blues work in again. Lowry a shot. And a save by Chevelday. And then behind the net, pass and knock down. And a penalty here on the Red Wings as Basson gets up and he has words. It's 6-2 for the Blue. Detroit. And it was Sergei Fedorov who went in very high and picks up a high sticking penalty. The Blues already up 6-2 now have the man advantage. Rich Sutter and Paul Cavallini have scored here in the second period to extend that Blues lead. Blues get the draw. They're two for four in the power play. Brown a shot block. Now Hall centers one tipped away. Puck not cleared by Brown. Left wing side to Hall. One Red Wing player's lost his stick. Now Hall on left wing. In front doesn't shoot it. Back to Brown to Hall. A rocket. Chevrolet a save. And Brendan Moore cleared the rebound wide. Now running in the corner. Running near corner. Back to Brown. Habscheid's lost his stick. Now Brett Hall on left wing. Hall into the corner for Ronning. Now behind the goal. Ronning out the other side for Oates on right wing. In front to Hall. Tipped away by Zombo. And back is Eisenman. One man back. Eisenman a shot. Pat saved by Riendo. And back come the Blues. Rod Brindamore. He comes in on left wing. Now to the corner for Oates. Oates back to Brown. Left point. Across to Ronning. Off his step. He gets it again. A minute left in the power play. Now Ronnie on right wing, works into the corner, pass, Dallas knocked it away. Ronnie gets it back. He works in front, a shot, and a skate save by Chevelday. Now in the corner, Brown, back on the point for Ronnie. On the boards to Brown, left it for Hull on left wing. Behind the goal, Brindamore tied up, then Dallas for Detroit, whacks it off the boards and down the ice. The Blues lead 6-2, 30 seconds left in Fedorov's minor. Brown races back to center. In across the line for Hull, but Fedek knocked it away. And now Oates at his own line. Handed it right to Dallas. And Dallas, who was signed as a free agent this year, shoots it back into the blue zone. Here's Stevens behind his own goal. Up to Courtnell on left wing. Gets the center across the line. Knocked down by Huda. Now in the corner. The Red Wings get the puck. And it's cleared by Dave Barr down the ice. And Fedorov back on the Red Wings at full strength. Blues lead 6-2. 5.05 to go in the second period. Stevens at center dumps it in. Shevel there to the goal. Pass to the far side. Knocked down by Paul Cavallini. Behind the goal to Bass and in front. Hull was there. The pass never got through. And the Red Wings take over. Eiserman. That pass across two lines. And play is called. And the faceoff back in the Red Wings end. 6-2, Blues lead it with 4.50 to go here in this second period. McDonald's restaurants of St. Louis and Metro East are proud sponsors of the St. Louis Blues. Ken Wilson, John Kelly. Been a much better period for the Blues, even though they led 4-2 after the first 20 minutes. The Red Wings have been held to only five shots here in this period. It has been a long night for their coach, Brian Murray for the Blues Brian Sutter it has not been a long night this team is a nice four goal lead off the draw pass from Eiserman to Kennedy across the line but he crisscrossed with Gallant and that put the play offside 6-2 for the Blues six different Blues have scored tonight not Brett Hull and the Blues lead 6-2 
Horton Olawe, Brown, Mahar, Sutter, and Paul Cavalini scoring for the Blues. Now the Red Wings back in their own zone. Huda, pass on left wing for Racine, gets one to center. Now a pass for Eiserman, broken up at the Blues line. Kennedy carries on, though. Here's Kennedy across the line, a shot just over the net. Down to the corner. The Blues break it up, and Lowry back on left wing. That center for Basson, three on two, and on right wing to McLean. He was bumped. Now a loose puck taken by McLean, shoots it wide. Lowry can't find a loose puck. And Eisenman for Detroit. Out of his own zone. Lost it. Paul McLean a pass. Nearly sent Lowry in. Now Eisenman grabs it for Detroit. Blues have done a great job of checking here in the second period. Eisenman hounded across the line of Probert. A drive and a glove save by Riendo. Now Probert, who had that chance in front for Kosher. And Kosher knocked down Cliff running from behind. Red Wings try and center one. Probert there. Kosher behind the net. Knocked down. Now Zombo on the right point. Kept it in. There's Probert on right wing. He looks in front. Good pressure by the Red Wings as Probert bumps Ronnie again. Puck loose behind the goal. Probert is there. He was bumped, though, and now Lowry for the Blues gets it. And he relieves the pressure and clears it down the ice. And an icing call here on the Blues. Well, some big, tough Red Wings there throwing their weight around in the Blues end. Joey Kosher either gave an elbow or a forearm to little Cliff Ronnie right across his face. And that sent him reeling. And, of course, Probert was out there also. The Red Wings with an opportunity moments ago. Probert letting one go. And it went off the glove of Riendo and into the corner. Riendo has not been tested much here in this period. Hey, Blues fans, a break in the action. A good time for you to break open an ice-cold Budweiser and enjoy that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Here's Fedorov in front for Detroit, a shot block. Blues lead 6-2, 2.50 left second period. Now behind the Blues goal. Probert there, centers it, but Jeff Brown knocked it away. And Mimeso starts back on right wing. Pass for Mahar, knocked away by Rick Green. Green ahead to Probert, into the blue zone. Intercepted by Stevens. Here's Green, a pass. Too far for Fedorov. Brown back, missed the check, and the puck comes to center. The young Fedorov, the Soviet, has really thrown his weight around quite a bit tonight. That center, Mimeso, can't work in. Back is McKay for Detroit on right wing, a shot! Off Brown, sticking off the glass. Fedorov on left wing. He's not flying by Stevens. And then Fedorov in or injured on the play as Scott Stevens caught Fedorov with his head down. And he might have twisted his knee, Ken, as he went over the hip of Scott Stevens. Meanwhile, away from Fedorov, McKay and Momesso are having words. Now Dallas and Stevens are shoving each other. And then a Blues player gets knocked down from behind. Probert knocks a Blues player down from behind, and these officials have something to be worried about here. Probert's in the middle. He gets up. He's ready to go. He's circling the pack, and these fans are up cheering for blood here. Leon Stickle, the veteran linesman with a hold of Probert. Now Momesso is involved with McKay in a pretty good fist fight. Meanwhile, they're trying to help Sergei Fedorov, the 21-year-old Soviet, who was checked, and he's up but being helped by the trainer as Momesso looks like he's talking to Hogarth as if to say, hey, why don't you stop it or are you going to stop it? So Hogarth, the referee, breaks up Momesso and McKay. The other linesmen, the other two officials, are escorting players to the penalty box, including Scott Stevens and Joey Koser. And now McKay and Momesso are separated. And there are gloves and sticks strewn around the ice. Here with 2.09 to go in the second period. Fedorov seems to be rather seriously hurt as he has helped off. He was checked by Scott Stevens, who threw a hip or a leg and caught Fedorov in a very awkward position. And he has to be helped off. It was a clean check, Ken, as we get another look at it. Fedorov moved in, tried to make a cut, 
and ran into the thigh of Stevens, who, you know, you, you cannot throw your leg out, you cannot knee, you cannot trip with your leg. Stevens was going for Fedorov. Fedorov made a move, and Fedorov really got caught on the thigh or knee of Stevens more than anything. And Fedorov made that move. That got Stevens kind of stretching. And you hate to see a great player like Sergei Fedorov, or any player for that matter, get hurt. And let's hope it's not a serious injury. Ron Hogarth has had his hands full really most of the night. He tried to set the tone in the first period. He even called a penalty shot for Detroit. And this melee had Bob Probert at the bottom. He came over, Ken, and cross-checked Stevens from behind as he was going nuts in there. And then Probert went after Stevens, but he viciously cross-checked Scott Stevens from behind and then went after the Blues captain. All in the midst of this, Fedorov was down on the ice. He was hoping that somebody didn't step on it. Now Ron Hogarth will hand out some penalties here, including a five-minute penalty to Bob Probert. It's 6-2, the Blues lead, and let's pause. Five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Brett Hull tonight has two assists, but he has not scored. This is the 49th game. He has 48 goals, trying to become only the fifth player in NHL history to score 50 goals in 50 games. So unless he can get two tonight, that'll make tomorrow night even bigger at the arena. So, John, a whole host of penalties have been called here, and it looks as though the Blues are going to have a five-minute power play. Vermesso gets a fighting major in the game misconduct. Scott Stevens, a roughing minor. And for the Red Wings, McKay, a fighting major in a game misconduct. Then Probert gets a roughing minor, a major for cross-checking, and a game misconduct. So the Blues will have a five-minute power play. And that was the appropriate call because Probert could have taken Stevens' head off the way he cross-checked him from behind. All of this was just moments after Joey Kosher really drilled little Cliff Ronnie, either with an elbow or a forearm, right to the face of Ronnie. Now he went down as if he'd been sawed down. So it has been a physical game. There's no question about it. There's been a lot of body checking in this game. And now the Blues, who have the 6-2 lead, have a five-minute power play and really have an opportunity to shut the door on the struggling Red Wings, who have lost three in a row and are winless in their last four games. In fact, the Red Wings have only two victories in their last eight games. Do you think the Red Wings are trying to send a message for tomorrow night and maybe the playoffs? I would think uh, the rest of the way they want to send a big message. Well, the Blues lead on the scoreboard. It's 6-2, and they have a power play. They're 2 of 5 on the power play this evening. In comes Cliff Ronnie on left wing. Into the corner. Back to Brown. Right point for Oates. To Brown. Fakes the shot. Now for Hall. Hall fakes a shoot. He scores! Number 49 for Brett Hall. A power play goal. And the Blues lead 7 2. He's one away from 50. How in the world did he ever score that? He is something, isn't he? Brown said to everyone in the building, I'm going to pass it back across to Hull. Hull didn't get a good grip on it. He kind of bounced it a little bit, said, I'm going to have to wait for it, wait for it, wind up. And then, as it turns out, he lets it go so well. Chevelday screened a bit by Zombo, and Hull still blasted by him. Really no element of surprise, but number 49. Here come the Blues again. Hull looking for 50. Oates, right wing to Cliff Ronnie. Back to Oates. Now on the wing to Ronnie. He works in. Back on the point for Oates. A shot tipped by Hull on goal and a save by Chevrolet. Oh, he nearly had 50 there. Now back on the point. Brown can't hold it in. A minute 15 to go in the period. Here comes Hull again. He works in on left wing. Back to Brown. Right wing to Brindamore. Shot. And that's kicked away by Chevrolet. Now the puck loose. Brindamore gets it. He works in. Now behind the goal. Back on the point to Brown. A minute to go in the period. To Brett Hull on left wing. Back for Brown. To Hull on left wing. Pass across. Broken up though. And the Red Wings take over. And Rick Green to center ice. The Blues lead 7-2. 40 seconds left in the period. The Blues still no power play because of that major to Probert. 
Here's Paul Cavallini back at center for Brown. He comes in on right wing. Now to McLean, a shot, and he fanned on it and went wide. And the Red Wings clear it back to center ice. It goes down the ice. Riendo leaves it for Brown. Here's Brown in his own zone at center to Courtneau. Four Oates across the line. He's chased back to center. Now Brown again, four Oates into the Red Wing end. Courtneau back in the left point. Can't keep it in. The Red Wings' Iserman takes over, shoots it away, and that will do it. As far as the period is concerned, and the Blues with a big second period score three goals. And now after 40 minutes, the Blues lead 7-2, and Brett Hall is one away from the coveted 50-goal mark. Team. Well, a 7-2 lead, Brett, and uh, you have one goal, the last one on the power play. It uh, must feel good tonight. Well, it does, uh, especially, you know, you get that goal, but, uh, you know, we're playing uh, better tonight than we have in a long time, and we needed a big win there. Uh, Detroit's uh, right on our, uh, our behinds, and uh, we needed to spread the, uh, the gap between us and them. Brett, let's look at your last goal. The goal on the power play. You have a monitor down there. Why don't you describe it for us? Well, uh, Jeff Brown still made a great play and slid it over to me, and I saw their defense come out, and uh, I just wanted to get it by them. I didn't know how much wood I could get on it, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't even see it going. Let's have another look at it, Brett. Uh, you didn't really pick an opening here? No, I just tried to get it by Rick Zombo there, and uh, I think luckily it just went through someone and uh, uh, just caught the far side. Well, number 49, and you're one away from 50. Are you nervous at all right now, uh, getting close to that 50-goal mark? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm so nervous. I, I can't stand it, but uh, it's such a good feeling that uh, kind of gets you pumped up and ready to go in the third. Brett, you've uh, said the last couple of days that scoring 50 goals in 50 games or less would mean as much as you, to you as anything you've done in hockey. Why is that? Well, I mean, you just look at the people who have done it. You know, Mike Bossy and Mario Lemieux, uh, Wayne Gretzky, and uh, uh, Maurice Rocker Richard. There's a, a legend uh, just in those four names. And uh, to be able to join that elite group would be uh, uh, more than an honor for me. Is chasing this record uh, similar to the record you chased last year when you surpassed Yari Curry? Well, I, I'm not so sure. Uh, there's so much uh, the season left. And, uh, you know, I, I had to uh, I had to get two in the last game of the last year to do that. Uh, you know, I have a little bit of more breathing room this year. So uh, it's, it's the same kind of feeling. And, uh, you know, it, it just, uh, I think, uh, besides myself, it gets the whole team fired up. Well, Brett, you have 20 minutes to go tonight and then tomorrow in St. Louis. Can you score 50 here in the third period? Well, I'd like to think so. But, uh, you know, if I don't, uh, I'm going to be pumped up to do it tomorrow night in St. Louis. Well, that wouldn't be bad either, right before the home fans. And there's no question about it. All right, Brett, congratulations and uh, good luck in the third period and tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Brett Hall, our guest, he's got 49 goals one away from 50 the Blues lead 7-2 and now let's go back upstairs to Ken Wilson John Kelly there's nothing quite like watching Brett Hall score a goal he has number 49 he may get number 50 yet tonight and that game begins at 730 now we're set for the third period and here to tell you about it Ken Wilson all right John Kelly meanwhile Probert still in the penalty box the Blues have a power play with a 7-2 lead Detroit has pulled Tim Shevelday and 23-year-old Dave Gagnon is in the goal for the Red Wings here in the third period. The Blues still with a puck at center ice. They've controlled it from the opening faceoff. Oates with a pass to Hall. Hall over the line. A feed to Ronnie. Back to Hall. He shoots. Oh, Gagnon. A great save robbing Hall of number 50. Puck behind the net. Ronnie has it. Hall's in front. Ronnie along the near board to the right point to Oates. Back to Ronnie. Blues power play. Ronnie shoots. And that goes off Gagnon. Behind the net, Brindamore into the corner to Hull. Hull with a puck, gives it to Brown at the point. Two minutes to go, and the Blues man advantage. They lead it 7-2, to two, and Hull forced to play the puck out of the offensive zone, and it goes back near goaltender Vincent Riendo. Seven different Blues have scored. A five-goal lead as Ronning gets the puck from Brown and dumps it in. Gagnon up from Adirondack, a product of Colgate. Clears the puck and the wings to center ice. Burr shorthanded over the line. Poke check in the corner with a puck. Now behind the net and he loses it. And Jeff Brown has it. Stick handling in his own zone. A left wing pass played by Scott Stevens to the red line. Blues are changing. Stevens off a check. Right wing to Oates. Oates gives it in front to Hall. A shoot. He scores! Brad Hall number 50. He scores from the slot and Hall has number 50. He becomes only the fifth player in NHL history 
to score 50 goals in 50 games. Number 16, Brett Hall, scores number 50 here in the third period of the 49th game. An incredible feat, and Brett Hall, in a great hockey town, gets a standing ovation. And cheers from his teammates, and congratulations. Brett Hall gets number 50, his second of the night. He is incredible. Well, he said he was nervous after the second period, but he does it, and the fans here in Detroit give him a nice ovation. And justifiably so. Adam Oates gets the assist on the goal. Number 50 for Hall. It's 8-2 for St. Louis. What a night for the Blues. A pair of goals for Hall. Numbers 49 and 50. He's in the record book. Courtnall moves in over the line. He's taken out by Huda. The Wings attempt to clear. Oates breaks up the play. Still a minute to go in the Blues man advantage. And the Red Wings get the puck and shoot it down the ice. Hall gets the power play goal at a minute 30 of the third period. His 50th goal of the season here in game number 49. Oates works to center ice to Brown. He'll shoot it in. The victim is the rookie goaltender Dave Gagnon. He's a native of this area. What a way to start in the NHL. Here's a shot from the blue line by Oates off the blocker of Gagnon. And the wings clear it down the ice. Probert will be back in 25 seconds. Both teams are changing players. It is 8-2. Blues. Paul Cavallini hands the puck to Oates, who moves to center ice. Right wing to Courtnall. He carries over the Detroit line. Centers. Here's a drive by McLean off the chest of Canyon. Courtnall, a shot. He scores. Jeff Courtnall makes it 9-2. Blues. Another power play goal. And the Blues with three straight power play goals, have five power play goals tonight and a shorthanded goal. A one-timer after McLean was stopped, it came to Courtneau, and Gagnon, the rookie in his first game, gives up Hall's 50th on his first shot he's faced in his career in the NHL, and then the second shot was that one by Courtneau, but Hall's goal again, the record setter, Right through the legs of Gagnon. And that was number 50 in game 49. It's now 9-2. At center ice from the faceoff. Detroit with a puck. Fennick moves in. He's stopped. The penalty is over. The wings at full strength. And the Blues dump it in. Rick Green back for the puck in his own zone. Up to Gallant. He can't get out. Kept in by Bassett for the blue line. A shot deflected right on by Sutter. And the save by Gagnon. Gagnon watches his teammates come to center ice. Galanta, rink-wide pass. It's dropped off for Zombo. He'll shoot right on Riendo. A good save on a blast by Zombo at the right point. Over to Fedek. The drive. He scores! From the left circle, Brent Fedek beats Riendo. And the Blues' lead is 9-3. Well, Fedek scores a goal like Courtnell scored moments ago from the slot. He actually fanned on it a bit. Riendo was coming across, and Fedek put it where Riendo was. So Brent Fedek scores, but it won't mean a whole lot. That cuts the lead to 9-3. to three. And the Blues have the puck. In their own end, Ronnie clears it out. He's on with McLean and Gino Cavallini. McLean moves in over the line and loses the puck. Go on for Detroit with it in his own end. Back to Sean Burr. Sean Burr in his own zone up to Gallant. The puck slides by him and back into the St. Louis end. Coming up to the four-minute mark of the third period, we have seen three goals in this period. It's 9-3 St. Louis. The Blues, Gino Cavallini to center ice, shooting the puck in. Ronnie is beaten to it. The Wings can't get it out. Paul Cavallini keeps it in and centers. And then Dallas gets it out. To Kennedy, his speed to Gallant broken up. And Jeff Courtnall will circle back in his own end. He gains some speed up to the red line. Now has the stick knock from his hands. Loses the puck. And the Wings have it at their own line. Sheldon Kennedy. He comes into the blue zone against Featherstone. Forced to the corner. Goes behind the net. Kennedy in the near corner. Taken out by Featherstone, and the puck 
shot by the Blues down the ice. Over the end red line, touched by Huda, and the whistle is icing against the Blues. 15-23 to go in the third period. The Blues lead it. Last two goals, Courtneau is 16th from McLean and Oates at 232, and then FedEx scored from Zombo at 324, but can the Blues have scored five power play goals tonight? It has been quite an offensive show. The puck comes out of the St. Louis end back to the Detroit zone. Wings are careless clearing. Hull leaves it at the Detroit blue line. And here comes Eves Racine, a former number one draft pick. Over the line into the corner to half shot. A backhand shot hits the side of the net. The Blues can't clear. Racine at the left point. A wrist shot. And that sails just wide. Here is Brindamore. Rink wide pass for Hull. Broken up by Racine who gives it back to Brindamore. He moves in over the line on the right wing. But he can't get around Eves Racine. He lifts the puck out of his end and it'll go back deep into Blues territory. Detroit making a wholesale change. The Blues are also changing. This third period, five and a half minutes old. Eiserman intercepts, gets it in front. A little backhand shot by Kennedy. And that's turned away by Riendo. Featherstone can't control. The wings are dangerous. A centering pass, and Eiserman scuffs it wide. And Oates takes him into the, the goal behind Riendo, and that jars the net loose and stops play. Adam Oates will play against Eiserman. You don't think necessarily of Oates as a defensive type player like a Mahar or a Ron Wilson or a Bob Bassett. But Brian Sutter before the game saying, Against Iserman, I have no problem going with Adam Oates, and he'll play very good defense. And Oates has had quite a night. He has, I believe, uh, four points. And Hall with two goals and two assists. And he had three assists against the North Stars, so he's on a great roll. Right out of the All-Star game where he had a few points. Blues clear the puck out. Back forth the veteran Rick Green for Detroit in his 14th NHL season. Then he loses the puck to Ronning. McLean bumps him. It comes in front of the Detroit net. Played by Gino Cavallini into the corner. His centering pass broken up. They can't get out. McLean handles it but can't keep the puck in. And here's Paul Cavallini at center ice. Just past the six-minute mark of the third period. Paul Cavallini over the line to Ronning. He gets crowded. The puck into the corner. Then McLean takes it behind the wings net. Zombo smashes McLean into the boards and the puck comes in front and Gino Cavallini can't quite steer it by the rookie goaltender Dave Gagnon who smothers it in the crease to stop one. Brett Hall has scored twice tonight. He has 50 goals in 49 games. Numbers 49 and 50 tonight. Number 50 at the 130 mark here in the third period on a power play. Here comes Detroit with both teams at full strength, dumping it in. Back for it is Marowa. Around the left side for Lowry. He's hit, but gets the puck out. And at center ice, Dallas tries to play it for Detroit. Doesn't handle it well, then gets it back and clears it out to center ice. Featherstone to Rich Sutter. Sutter over the line. He's stopped. And after he's stopped by Longo, Marowa shoots the puck in. Canyon clears it up the boards and it's sent out by Burr and Mario Merwa backhands it right back in. 13 minutes to go in this one. It's 9-3 St. Louis. The Blues putting an end tonight to a two-game losing streak. Red Wings to center ice, shoot the puck in. Riendo clears it around the boards. And Oates comes up with it. Two on two with Hall. Hall at center ice, watching Oates go over the line. Knocked down by Huda in the corner. Oates tries to center, and the wings intercept. Three on two, Burr feeds off on the right wing. Return pass doesn't get through. And here comes Brindamore back down the left side. Barr back checking, intercepts his pass, and circles. Long pass at center ice from Barr. Goes off half side stick. Back for it is Brown. He dumps it out to center ice, and Detroit in possession. Racine with it. 9-3, the Blues lead it. His pass comes ahead to Sheldon Kennedy. A blast right on. Riendo the stick save. Brown gets the puck, and he'll just fling it the length of the ice. It goes right to goaltender Dave Gagnon. 12 minutes to go in the third. Racine at center ice for the wings. To Habshine over the line. Now to Kennedy. Kennedy into the slot. Crowded. Nice pass to Habshine. He shoots. And a good save by Riendo and Mark Habshine. Ronnie without a stick moves the puck ahead with his glove. Tipped by a Detroit player and out to McLean. Left wing to Corton all over the line. Three on two back for McLean and a nice interception by Zombo. His pass to Sheldon Kennedy late in a shift. Wings are changing. Kennedy over the line trying to cut in. Taken out by Marowa. Ronning gets the puck. 
He comes up with a good move around Eiserman to McLean. The puck back to Ronnie. Now to McLean over the Detroit line. McLean moves in the slot. A pass for Courtnall. He can't get a shot. And the puck pushed into the corner by Detroit. Zombo moves it now to Green. He comes to center ice. Ahead to Eiserman. He carries the puck over the St. Louis blue line. In front for Gallant. An elevated pass. Gallant can't connect. Now Kosher behind the net. Centers. And a great interception by Marawa, who gives the puck to Courtnall. Gordon all in his own end for the Blues. Rink wide to Basson. Basson up the right side. Falls down as he approaches Bobby Dallas. And the puck along the boards. A fight for it there. Basson is still on the ice. Finally, it's pride loose by Eiserman. Off the boards behind his net. Intercepted in the corner by Lowry. Then he's checked. And the puck comes to center ice. Snips has it there. Shoots it back in. The Blues are offside, but a delayed call. And the wings clear it out. Basson at center ice. Pass behind Sutter goes to Lowry. Here's Lowry with Sutter over the line. Sutter takes the puck. Then he's checked by Huda who gathers it in. Huda comes from behind his net and just clears the puck sharply off the boards down the ice. No icing. Meanwhile, Rich Sutter involved in a collision at center ice with a wings player went down. Slow in getting up. Then he decks Fedick heading for the bench and they'll fight. Sutter and Fedick. And now everyone gets into it and a Blues player gets punched in the face now Lowry wants to go after kosher I believe Jeff Brown got a cheap shot from Joey kosher and we've got quite a melee across the way now a 9-3 game the Blues leading it now Gallant trying to wrestle Sutter out of the pile I'm not sure John which Detroit player collided with Sutter at center ice I believe they were going to their respective benches but no question Sutter took a shot at Brent Fettig and then Brown seemed to get punched and drilled down by Kosher and that's why all of this is occurring. Well I think it was Fettig who upset Sutter and then Kosher suckered a Blues player Brown from behind. Why he did that I don't know. Jeff Brown did not do anything. And now Isabard and Sutter having words but meanwhile Kosher and Lowry trying to be separated. I have to admire Dave Lowry for going after Kosher, who took a blatant cheap shot at Dave or Jeff Brown, and Lowry went right after Kosher. Now Gallon and Sutter push and shove. Now Basson, here we go again. Basson gets things started again. And Gallant gave Basson quite a shot from behind, and they're going at it. They're paired up now. Every man for himself. This takes you back to the old days. You don't see this very often, John, anymore. Fortunately. Well, there's a big pile up at center. And uh, if you can make heads or tails about who's on top or who's on the bottom you're a better man than me I'll tell you that looks like a rugby scrum out there five pairings ten players the two goalies looking on gloves and sticks strewn around the ice well these folks in Detroit have watched hockey for a long time and they go back to the six team league years ago and events like this used to occur with some regularity with the familiarity of teams and players and but it's a novelty if nothing else nowadays things have calmed down a bit but you get the idea something may happen at any moment. Iserman is in the uh, middle of it a rather gentlemanly player and they're still shoving and bumping and a lot of yapping going on now and two linesmen trying to keep ten players separated no picnic and you got Bob Basson and Gerard Gallant the two uh, main combatants at the moment. Basson was going after another Detroit player moments ago. Gallant really slammed them from behind. Now they're taking Sutter over to the penalty box, I believe, with Kosher. So that leaves eight in the center of the ring. Well, I don't know why they just don't start sending players to the dressing room and getting them out of the ice area. Because I'll tell you what, Kosher would not hesitate to come out of that box 
and go after Sutter, another member of the Blues. I guess these two teams are going to play tomorrow night somewhere, too, huh? At the arena, 7.35. Uh, you don't think the Wings are going to take this one lightly, for sure. They're down 9-3. Well, this has been going on for about five minutes. It all began at center ice when I think Kosher knocked Sutter down. I think Kosher's the one who knocked Sutter down. He was upset, and he went after Brent Fedek. Fedek was knocked down. It wasn't Fedek who began the altercation, but Kosher. And then Kosher came from behind and suckered Jeff Brown. I don't think we'll see it as we have a replay. And Brown was knocked out by Kosher, and that began the entire melee. As Lowry, and you got to give Lowry full marks, Ken, for going after Joe Kosher. I don't care who it is in the National Hockey League. If they sucker one of your players, somebody better, they better respond, and Dave Lowry did. He did, no question. He did a good job. Got into the middle of things. That was one of those brawls where if you were on the ice, you would be truly embarrassed if you weren't in the middle of things. But Lowry went right after Kosher. Kosher is a disturber without question, and he has been disturbing since the opening faceoff tonight. This has been a game that, even in the first period, in the early going, you could sense that referee Ron Hogarth felt that he had to have a firm hand and take control. Unfortunately, he had two or three very tough penalty calls that had both sides distressed unhappy with the way things were going he called the penalty shot that was in question a zombo cut the blues rod brindamore only got two minutes instead of five or a game misconduct so a lot of things happened in the first period and well that's some two hours plus ago now uh, really leading up to all of this and not much will be forgotten between now and the face off tomorrow night at the arena. There is still 10 minutes and 10 seconds to go in the third period before this crowd of 19,875 in Detroit. The Blues lead at 9 3. We're going to take a break. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. His Blues record setting 55th goal against Greg Millen. I think that's the night. We are down to 10 10 to go in the third period, which could be 10 minutes and 10 seconds of very interesting hockey given that. The outcome of this game has well been decided. Many of the crowd of almost 20,000 have departed, and we are finally ready to resume play. By the way, Glenn Featherstone and Doug Huda, it has been reported, also have game misconducts. And the Red Wings get the puck shorthanded for a five-minute span, and Green shoots at the length of the ice. The Blues looking to add to their total of five power play goals, led by Oates at his own line to Hull. Back to Oates. Brown's also on. So is Brindamore and Ronnie, who gets the puck over to Hull. Back to the point to Brown. Back to Hull. Not a Brown. Right point to Adam Oates. Back to Brown. A blast right on the save. Brindamore can't get it by. Gagnon on the rebound. And the Blues keep it in. Oates at the right point. Blues lead at 9 3 to Brindamore behind the net. The puck slips away. Zombo can't get it. Hull is there. So is Ronnie. Ronnie tries to play it to the point. And the pass is intercepted. Barr can't get it out. Green does and shoots at the length of the ice. Both coaches will send on some fresh players. 9-15 remaining in the third. 9-3 Blues. Here's Jeff Brown to his own line. He'll have to circle back, forced to do so by Fedek. Brown with Marawa, McLean, Cortnall, and Gino Cavallini in a give and go with Cortnall. Shoots! And Gagnon makes the save and holds the puck. For a whistle, 8.59 to go in the game and 3.49 to go in the Blues power play. Well, Cortnell has a couple of goals tonight as he breaks a long scoring drought. Prior to tonight, he had not scored a goal in 10 games. But the two big men tonight for the Blues, Oates and Hull. Oates has four assists. Hull has two goals and two assists. Face off in the Red Wings zone. Cortnall can't get the puck. And the Wings can't get it out. Burke can't get it by. Marawa who keeps it in. To McLean. Blues have the man advantage. Side of the net in front to Cortnall. He shoots. And a skate save by Gagnon. Puck in front. Gino Cavallini can't get it. As Fedek shoots it down the ice and heads for the Detroit bench. Eight and a half minutes to go here in the third. Marawa, nice move in his own zone. Out of the center circle. Right wing to Cortnall. 
Over the line, drops it. Marawad dumps it off the end boards to the side of the net. And Gagnon, the 23-year-old in his first NHL period, smothers the puck to stop play. And the Blues will change their power play unit here. Well, Jeff Courtneau was benched the last game in Minnesota, only played one shift in the second and third periods, but he's responded with a nice effort tonight. By the way, I mentioned Oates has four assists. He now has 39 assists on the year, which now ties him with Pelly Eklund of the Flyers for 10th in the league among all assist leaders. So he's missed 18 games, yet he's tied for 10th in assists. Here is Ronnie in the slot to Hull. A shot right on the save. Puck is loose, kicked out. Hull gets it back to the point to Oates. Under three minutes now to go on the Blues power play. They lead it nine to three. Ronnie in the right circle. Feeds into the corner to Brindamore, into the slot, and his pass broken up. Eisenbart, a little shovel of Hapshot. He's got a breakaway from the blue line. Hapshot moves in, shoots, he scores! Mark Hapshot, a shorthanded breakaway goal for Detroit. And that's the 11th Red Wing shorthanded goal this season. They lead the NHL in shorthanded goals. Mark Hapshot, the former Oiler and North Star, gets the Red Wing goal. He's got great speed, and he picked up a loose puck at center and beats Riendo right through his legs. And that's the second shorthanded goal we've seen tonight. Riendo stopped the penalty shot earlier in the evening. That one by Fedek, but Hapshide gets his seventh of the year at 12 10. Eisenbart gets the only assist. I'm sorry, Ken. Detroit scoring the last two goals. Fedek at 324. Now Hapshide at 12 10. And two and a half minutes to go in the Blues' mad advantage. And play is stopped as it goes out of play. So there's 737 to go. 9 4 Blues. As action resumes, Marois for the Blues shoots the puck in. Gagnon, the goalie, clears it around. The board's not out. Marois centers to Ronnie. He can't keep it in, and Mario Marois has it at center ice, shoots the puck in off the boards. The Blues have the man advantage for another one minute and 55 seconds. Red Wings, long pass from their own zone, out to center ice to David Barr. Barr, a pass in front out of Kennedy's reach. Kennedy in the corner, centers for Barr, and he can't control. Now the Blues start out. Courtnall, who can motor to the red line. Now into the Detroit end. Can't get around Green. The puck goes to the goal. Gagnon can't clear. Kept in. A blast by Brown. Right on. And Gagnon a good save. Then Green fans. Here's Ronnie behind another wraparound. And he can't get a good shot. As Green sends him sprawling. Jeff Brown with a puck at the right point. Shoots it over to Oates. And it deflects off the blade of his stick over the glass. And into the crowd. 6.31 to go and a minute 21 to go in the Blues power play. Is Adam Oates on a roll? Four assists tonight. He had three assists in the loss in Minnesota and had the five-point game in Chicago at the All-Star Contest. And by the way, those five points in one game, Adam Oates becomes the Blues all-time point leader in all-star competition and he's only played one game he surpassed Gary Unger who had four points in seven games and Brett Hall who had four points in two games Unger played in all-star games before they used to get a dozen goals in those all-star games didn't they the all-star game now looks more like a basketball game here come the Blues to center ice still on the power play Oates will circle just over six minutes to go. It's 9-4 Blues. Oates to Brown. He'll chop the puck into the corner. Brindamore is there after it. Trying to move around Dallas. He can't. He gets it back. Now to Hall along the near boards. To Brindamore. To Brown at the right point. Left point to Paul Cavallini. Back for the first time in quite a while. His pass broken up by Zombo. With a feed to Fedek on the right wing with Burr, who takes the pass behind the back return to Fedek, two on two, then he's poke check. Here are the Blues. Hull gets it from Oates. Hull to the Detroit line. Leaves it nicely. Bring the ball a drive right on. And Gagnon makes the save on Rod Brindamore and holds on to stop play with 5.33 to go in the third period. In case you're wondering why Gagnon was brought up, Glenn Hanlon has a broken hand on his left hand, his catching hand, and he'll be out a couple of weeks. And that's why Gagnon's the backup. Brindamore, a pretty good shot there. 
And Gagnon made a good body save. He played in Adirondack for most of this year, had a record of 8, 6, and 5, a 3.97 average. He was signed by Detroit as a free agent this past June out of Colgate University. Detroit still shorthanded, gains the puck, shoots at the length of the ice. 12 seconds, and the Wings will be back at full strength. They intercept Racina's shot, kicked out by Riendo. Ronnie plays it to Sneps behind the St. Louis net. Kennedy serving Kosher's five-minute penalty, comes back on the ice. Blues move in, the puck gets away, and here comes Detroit. Iserman runs into Marowat center ice. Kennedy loses the puck, McLean has it. His pass ahead to Kortnall, in over the line. Kortnall puts on the brakes. Ronnie moves to the corner. Rink wide pass is deflected to Sneps at the left point. In the corner to McLean, bad angle shot turned away. Ronnie behind the net. Gets shoved by Green. Works into the corner. Tries to get away from Green. That's not easy, and there'll be a penalty call. Rick Green and Ronning both go down. And the penalty will be called here by referee Ron Hogarth. 442 to go in the third. 9-4. The Blues lead it. And tonight, Minnesota is in Washington. That game is 1-1 in the third period. Here it is 9-4 Blues with the power play from the faceoff in the Detroit end. Ronning gets the puck to Oates. Back to Ronning. Out near the blue line. In a crowd. Leaves it for Oates. He tries to get it towards the goal, and it's knocked down. And Sean Burr shoots the puck the length of the ice. The Blues tonight have outshot the Red Wings 41 to 24. Here come the Blues again over the line. Brindamore in the slot to Oates. A pass for Ronning intercepted. And a pass for Burr gets by him. And the puck goes deep into the St. Louis end as the Red Wings are changing players. Just over four minutes to go in this one. Oates takes a pass from Brown. Then his feed is intercepted. Barr trying to move in for Detroit. David Barr into the corner. David Barr wedged to the boards behind the net by Oates. And that springs McLean loose, the one-time Red Wing. At center ice to Brindamore. He'll shoot it in. Gagnon behind the net leaves it. Played around by Longo. Not out. It's intercepted by Brown, then knocked away. And here comes Barr. Two on two with Habshot over the line. Brindamore. Takes out his man, and that gives the puck to Oates. Now to Ronnie. Detroit still shorthanded. Blues lead at 9-4 as Ronnie drives the puck in, and both teams are changing players. Tomorrow night, 7-30 at the arena. These two, two teams go at it again. Red Wings shoot the puck the length of the ice, and there's 3.15 to go in this one. Here's Marawa on his own end. He hands it to Kennedy, but he brings it in over the line with Eiserman preceding the puck, and it is offside. And there are 29 seconds now to go in Rick Green's penalty. Well, day in and day out at home or on the road, you can always count on the great taste of Bud Light. It delivers every time. So ask for a Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. It's 9-4 for the Blues. Hull has scored two goals, numbers 49 and 50. Last year, Hull didn't get his 50th goal until game 54. So he's five ahead of his pace from a year ago. He scored a mere 72 a year ago. He has 50 goals in 49 games this season. Three minutes left. Here come the Blues, led by Paul Cavallini. He has a goal tonight in his return. Pass for brother Gino broken up. Detroit comes back. Eiserman falls down when he looks up and sees Courtnall. Gets out of the way, loses the puck, but saves his life. Gino Cavallini carries over the Detroit line to McLean for Courtnall. He can't move in. He's tied up behind the net. A loose puck, and it's taken by Rick Zombo. Zombo trying to get it out, can't get around McLean, and Gino Cavallini trying to wrestle away from Kennedy. Leaves the puck for McLean. Detroit at full strength. 2.25 to go, a centering pass. Gets away from Courtnall, and here come the Red Wings. Sean Burr to the red line, into the blue zone. Gives it off to Eiserman on the near wing. His pass broken up by Courtnall, and here comes Jeff Courtnall. Into the Detroit end, cutting in around Longo, a shot, and a good save by Gagnon, who had to hold his ground. And the Red Wings come to center ice, Fedek, a little flip pass ahead to Burr over the line, his shot right on the save by Riendo, and he grabs Burr's rebound shot, and Riendo holds the puck for a whistle that stops play with 1.54 to go here in the third period. Well, Brett Hall's goal here in the third period is 50th of the year, a record setter and you want to read all about that goal and everything else about tonight's game in tomorrow's St. Louis Post-Dispatch 
for home delivery of the post, call 622-7111. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Ken Wilson, John Kelly in Detroit from the faceoff, a quick shot by Fedek, and Riendo gets a piece of that. And Marowad drilled down by Sean Burr behind the Blues net. Red Wings dangerous from the point. Alongo shot is knocked down. Alongo gets it again, and the puck finally deflects out of play, and the action stopped with a minute 37 to go, and Marowad and Burr have words. Burr, John, really stepped into Marowa behind the St. Louis net. Now a very good hit by Burr, one of the clean hits tonight. We've had a lot of not so clean hits. And Burr knocked Marowa down. Speaking of the St. Louis Post Dispatch, look for your chance to enter a new contest, the Black and Blue Rendezvous Contest. And entry forms can be found in the Sunday travel section of the Post Dispatch. Winners can receive, among other prizes, two tickets to a Blues game in Chicago. And the contest sponsored by the Post Dispatch Southwest Airlines, the Blues, and the Drake Hotel in Chicago. From center ice, the wings shoot it in, and the Blues clear it the length of the ice. And as Detroit goes back for it, it's an icing call against the Blues. These Red Wings are on the verge here of their fourth loss in a row. After this one, they'll be winless in their last five, and will have only two victories. In their last nine games, things are not going well right now for Red Wing coach Brian Murray. They're going to drop below 500 tonight. And when Brian Murray said this morning that moving from the Patrick division where he was with Washington for eight and a half years to the Norris was not really an easy transition, he was right. The Hawks and the Blues have given the Wings all kinds of problems this year. Here come the Blues to center ice. Both teams at full strength. Gino Cavallini forced to the corner by Longio. Longo and Gino wrestle behind the net. Racine is there. A battle for the puck. Sutter trying to kick it loose does to the Last corner to Adam Oates. Oates tries to go in front. Can't get around Isabard. And Detroit comes to center ice and Fedek is stopped. Mar Marwa gets it to Oates. His pass into the slot. Gino Cavallini knocked down. Gives it to brother Paul at the point. A shot right on. Pad save. And Sutter can't get a good shot and a rebound attempt. 40 seconds to go in the third period. Here comes Detroit to center ice. Sean Burr will just backhand it in. The Blues now will be 5-1 and one on the year against Detroit. Half a minute to go. The same two teams tomorrow night at the arena. Dallas intercepts at center ice for the wings and backhands it in. Paul Cavallini back for the puck around the boards to Brindamore. He comes to center ice with 15 seconds to go. They give to McLean and he loses it. And it's shot back in by Bobby Dallas. Behind the Blues net, Paul Cavallini. Five seconds to go. Paul Cavallini in his own end checks the clock, and this one is over. Brett Hall gets goals 49 and 50. And tonight in Detroit becomes only the fifth player in National Brett Hockey Hall League history to score 50 goals in 50s. Quite a feat for this young man, Brett Hall. What a star he is. And the final tonight at Joe Louis Arena, 9-4, as the Blues get a shorthanded goal and five power play goals among the nine. What a performance here in Detroit. And an opportunity now to summarize things in the sense of our three stars. John, our Budweiser three stars tonight. Number three goes to Rich Sutter, had a goal and two assists, and the shorthanded goal to make it 5-2 in the second period was one of the biggest of the night. Adam Oates had four assists, one shy of a club record for most assists in a game. And tonight's number one star, no doubt about it, Brett Hall had two goals and two assists, including his 50th of the year. Those are the Budweiser three stars. Brett Hall has done it here in Detroit tonight, but he'll be ready to go to add to 50 tomorrow night at the arena as these two teams will get together in St. Louis.